have to assume that we have to be 10% lower from where we are now just to get things moving. But as you say, if, if, it, if we don't have the people at the bottom of the ladder being able to borrow, then we stay stuck where we are. And are clearly that has a big wealth effect in the UK and dampens the economy further. Are the measures that Darling announced this week, Morad, are those measures second bailout in three months, are they going to be enough to, to, to unclog the, the markets, the credit markets, make sure banks are more willing to lend or not? That is essentially the question here, it, whether the banking crisis, if you want, in inverted commas, is going to be averted. It's all about confidence in banking. The measures announced so far are substantial and they amount to a lot of addition to the public purse. However, there's still a lack of confidence in the large lenders, Royal Bank of Scotland, uh, Lloyd's, uh, Lloyd's, group, Lloyd's Bank Group, etc. So that needs to be overcome. Once we're over that, and that will happen, whether that results in full-scale nationalisation, I, I doubt the government wants to do that. That's yet to see. But once that banking confidence sector is over, then credit will start flowing. That may be a year away. But I agree with the, the comments we've heard as well, that, that, that the housing market is in, in a slump, and we haven't quite got to that price discovery phase yet, which is probably some time away. Jim, talk to me about nationalising the banks in the UK. Is it a necessary requirement? Should the big banks be nationalised? Well, if I were the UK, and the mistake that Gordon Brown made in our last year was not letting Northern Rock go bankrupt, he should have let some people go bankrupt, then the assets would have moved from the incompetent to the competent people, and the whole system could have started over with a stronger base. What's happening now is they're taking the assets away from the competent people, giving them to the incompetent people, and saying, now you compete with the competent people with their own money. This is bad economics. This is terrible economics, and it's terrible morality. Not that politics care about morality. This is not the way to solve your problems. This is what the Japanese tried in the 1990s, and they still talk about the lost decade in the 1990s. So, Jim, is it a simple case, what, you let all the banks go bankrupt? Is that your policy for fixing this? My policy is to let the incompetent people go bankrupt, the people who are bankrupt, let them go bankrupt, and then the competent people. There's plenty of equity world money in the world that would go in buy up the competent people, the competent, the, the still solvent assets, and start over again. Banks have been going bankrupt for a few hundred years, and especially investment banks have been going bankrupt. This is not the end of the world. This has happened many times before. But look at the Japanese model. It's 19 years later in Japan. The Japanese stock market is still 80% below where it was 19 years ago because they tried what the English are doing. It didn't work. It's never worked. The only things that have ever worked are let the people collapse, grab the good assets, and start over again. I'm glad that Mr. Rogers said this isn't the end of the world. He's quite right. And he is, of course, quite right that banks do go bust, although it isn't a good thing if they go bust very often. The policy he's just prescribed about the error, about the so-called error of Northern Rock, is exactly the mistake that the previous Treasury Secretary, Hank Paulson, made with Lehman's. He thought that would clear the problem, get a line under the sand. It shows that it's not, not everyone is protected by the government. The bad ones can go to the wall. What happened? We had an exa exacerbation of the banking crisis post Lehman's. In fact, letting large institutions like this go bust simply prolongs the recession. To suggest that we're doing the same policies that Japan also is slightly off the mark because they took a long time and they actually reflated a lot of those bad assets. We're actually doing this a lot quicker. We're acting in concert with monetary policy as well as fiscal policy and we're trying to draw a line on this by saying we'll ring fence bad assets. The idea that we give the assets, that we take the assets away from the good managers and give them to the bad managers, it's those bad managers that have got us precisely in this place in the first place. So, you know, I, I think, again, I have to disagree with that assessment with respect. Gentlemen, hold your thoughts. Back to you in just a few wait seconds. Wait a minute, sir. Sir, can, sir, can you listen? Can you understand English? I said they're taking the assets from the competent people and giving them to the incompetent people. I didn't say give the, the okay. incompetent people. What are you talking about? He, he did clear it. Gentlemen, hold the thoughts. We've got to go to a break. Oh, we've had the Chowdhury view. We've had the Rogers view. Your view. Well, I think if you're willing to take a 20-year time horizon, Jim might have a point. You know, you go through Armageddon now and something good comes out of it. But we're living in democracies. People won't allow 20 years. So the reality is politicians have to respond to dealing with these problems in the near term, and that's not going to come from Jim's prescription. So I think the sort of policies we're following now are the appropriate ones, with the footnote that we're leaving an awful lot of debt for our grandchildren and we're not doing them any favours by refusing to take the short-term pain. Well, so that's a problem, isn't it, Jim? I mean, what about our, our, our grandchildren? They're going to be left with a lot of debt here, aren't they? 
It's not just your grandchildren, it's your children, it's you. What are you don't you know how much debt the English government has taken on here in the last uh, six months and how much it's going to take on in the next year or two? I mean, these are gigantic numbers for a country that cannot afford it right now. And the North Sea, which has been the major source of your income, is drying up. Ask your own government. Don't ask me. Jim, is the UK going to lose its AAA credit rating? Well, I, I don't know. I'm not a credit rate, uh, rater, and, and they're, I don't pay too much attention to them anyway. We've already learned in the past few years that they don't know what they're doing. <clears throat> Do you agree with that? I mean, there, there's a big discussion going on right now. Uh, that's, a whole separate, that's a whole separate discussion. Yeah, we no, wanted no. to oh, The AAA. Oh, I mean, the same day that the S&P downgraded Spain from yeah. AAA, they reaffirmed the UK's AAA rating. But I don't want to go into comment about the competence of the rating agency. It's a whole different debate. But they did <coughs> reaffirm the, the UK's AAA rating. So I guess we're okay for the moment. Yeah, but I, I think, you know, with, with the UK, when the, the AAA rating refers to producing sterling, you know, we can print that. We can just build the printing press at Basel and make pounds. So we should be AAA. Of course, Australia comes on the currency, so if you're worried about the uh, credit quality of the, of, the, of the UK, you see that through the exchange rate that we were discussing earlier, and not, not so much where the gilts would default. Uh, we keep hearing about the public sector deficit, you know, we're taking on great more, more and more public debt, absolutely right, we are, but as I, I, I reiterate what I said earlier, our, as a percentage of GDP, our public sector debt ratio is actually quite favourable compared to a lot of developed countries, including the Eurozone. Why are we focusing just on the UK here? Because the FX rate is under pressure. As we've again heard, the euro and the dollar are in the same boat with regard to that. It's just outside investors are looking at the three major currencies. And Jim, and you're, and Jim you're, I mean, you're, you're, you're against the dollar as well, aren't you? So th the pound and the dollar... I don't see good things for the U.S. dollar or the, or the pound. Uh, there are many currencies in the world. I own a few others that I think are sounder, but there are not many, not if any, sound currencies left in the world. Would I mean, it's very difficult. I've, I own the yen, and I expect it to keep going higher. But once, it, once this big rally in the end ends, if it does, then what am I going to do with my money? I don't know. I did promise I'd give you two the last word. <coughs> How do we make money right now, very quickly? Make money? That's yeah. a, if I had answer that, I'd be on the beach in Rio. I think the government should look at getting more foreign direct investment in, perhaps by means of some sort of tax holiday or looking at various other tax measures, get foreign income in here. That will also ease the pressure on the effects rate. But I don't think it's a long-term problem. Five seconds, Paul. G government bonds are a bubble, but it's going to...